Deborah Barrow, thanks so much for sitting down and talking with us today. You're welcome. Now, the library has been 30 years in the making. How do you see this facility as becoming an integral part of San Diego's identity? Well, you know, I think it's already part of the identity of San Diego with the beautiful, iconic dome that people have been watching for many months. And just yesterday, we had a concert over capacity, 300 people, 350 people came to this concert, the first activity of the new library. And of course, the sneak peek, we had thousands of people here in the San Diego library area. This is clearly a modern 21st century library. Um, and it seems like there's some learning centers here. How has the focus shifted as far as libraries, as far as you're concerned? You know, libraries are a location. They're a place for the people. And whatever people need, we're working toward helping them. So we have a career center here. We have a maker space where youth will be able to engage in scientific exploration and digital exploration. We've got, of course, our wonderful Denny Sanford Children's Library, where children will have their first experience in a library, and to some extent with each other. There's so many things happening in this beautiful library. Let's talk about the Charter High School, and the sixth and seventh floor is not finished. It's part of the public school system. What is it, who is it for? It is for high schoolers. And we have, I believe, about 260 students in the high school. It's E3 Civic High. Amazing students, amazing faculty, and they are learning so much and involved in the library as well. And there's going to be some special, uh, they have some special access to a production studio, City TV. Tell us about that. That's right. Part of our agreement is to support the students in every single way and in the digital age. That means doing things that will help them be prepared for work in the future. So the City TV is going to have a TV station here, and students can actually come down here and do programming. And tell us about, there's a, a mentoring uh, aspect to this too. Tell us about the right. mentors. Well, you know, we have a homework center here as well. These are excellent students and so they have a role to play in helping other students. In addition to that, they'll have internships here as well as in the community. Tell us about the uh, modern technology uh, here that we haven't really seen a whole lot. The Wi-Fi, the optic technologies, your e-readers. Bring us up to speed on that. Well, you know, the libraries have often been involved in the latest technology. We help introduce technology to the public. And so here at this library, we have e-readers. We have more than 300 computers for people to come in and use free of charge. We also have Wi-Fi throughout this library. So if someone has their own device, they're able to tap into to the system. We also have an automated materials handling system that will take items that people return to the library, automatically check them in, and sort them. So it seems like there's a combination because you certainly have a, a lot of hardcover books and, and CDs and DVDs as well. That's right. We're a modern library for a modern community, which means that we've got all of the best of everything, the technology, the books, the people, the programs. Well, the library cost $185 million. All of that money, I guess a lot of that money came from private donors. What do you think that uh, that says about our communities, having people willing to give so much money? It is so impressive. It's unprecedented to have a public project like this one with something like 40% of the project coming from private donations. So there wasn't any op um, city operating uh, funds available, or rather, <laughs> used for this project. But what it says too is that people understand this is for the community and they want to see the very best in education and community engagement. What's your response to some people who say, listen, a hundred eighty five million dollar price tag is really steep. Why not just use the old library? Well, because the old library wasn't adequate and people couldn't use it because there was no parking, it was we had two-thirds of the collection in a basement. It was not accessible in so many ways. This library is. And judging from today, I'd say people are using it in an unprecedented way. It's certainly crowded right now. Now, how many employees uh, do you have here, and are you going to hire any more? We have about 82 what we call FTE. That amounts to more people, of course, because some are part-timers. And this is pretty much the complement of staff that we'll have here. But what we are doing is working smarter by using the technologies that are available to us to augment our services. All right. City Librarian Deborah Barros, thank you so much. You are welcome. Thank you so much.